It is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with my friends. <laughs> Got you guys in that one. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm always here with a few friends, and we're here to discuss things. And uh, welcome to DJ Roundtable. Uh, Hunter, a.k.a. DJ Cole thing is on remote somewhere in the woods with his family uh camping. Uh this is uh all about his celebration for his birthday. Again, we wish him happy birthday and hopefully he's enjoying himself and uh maybe do a little fishing or just sitting around a campfire and uh enjoying some spooky stories, you know. That's always the fun stuff when out there camping. Uh and I want to thank you guys all for coming in here tonight and stopping by saying hi. And if you have something to say, please say so down below in the chat and we'll get to those questions and we'll hopefully have some great answers uh if you're watching this on youtube well welcome uh we're live on tuesday nights on twitch and if you always you always go to our twitch channel and follow us on twitch and we're here every tuesday at eight o'clock central time the other thing also is that uh, if you get a chance you smash a like button make sure you follow the channel and you know make sure you tell your friends because it's always great. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, why not? You're going to miss an episode of the DJ Roundtable. I mean, there's a lot of great information here from a lot of great DJs from all around the country and uh, all around the world. We have some international DJs in here once in a while, too. So you never know who stops by because we have a lot of friends. They like to stop by and say hi. So with the tonight episode, uh, I talked to you, I sent a message earlier to both you guys. Um, a starter DJ set for two thousand dollars. So if I had two thousand dollars, I wanted to get into DJ. I'm not talking about doing DMX. I'm not talking about doing moving heads. Uh, not even talking about you know a lot of lighting. I'm talking about just basic st sound system, basic controller, not computer. You already have the computer. I got I got a laptop. Whatever it is, Apple. If it's Windows, whatever. I have a laptop. I can install software on, so I can run any software I want. There's no, I have to run this, run that. Let's look at it this way. What would be a couple go-to either models or units you would want to go to if you had $2,000 to spend to get the basics to get started on your DJ career? So, Matt, I know you're a big guru on equipment, and you have a lot of opinions on good equipment. But again, mm -hmm. we're talking about someone who's starting out, guy, guy or girl who just started DJing tonight, says, hey, you know what? I want to be like, I want to be like DJ Salsas. I want to be a DJ like Brentley. I want to be like me. Um, <laughs> I want to be like the guys I see on, and the girls I see on uh, DJ Roundtable. So they want to be like DJ Rachel. They want to be like anyone. How would you go about doing that? What would you, what would you first, what would be the first place you'd say to go to as a resource to get equipment, would it be the uh -huh. SSL? Would it be? Uh, yeah, I think I think you need to start. Oops. Yeah, I think you need to start with a controller. Um, so obviously, you kind of want to start with controller, sound system, and build out from there. Um, I mean, you need speakers, obviously. Uh, I would say get a subwoofer because you're going to regret it if you don't. But I understand subwoofers are expensive and you may not have the money for that. But I mean, you can get some decent. 15 inch the the new mackies sound really good um you know you could even the icoa is like 15 inch or 449 so 900 bucks you got two big 15 inch tops get yourself a controller for two or 300 bucks get uh table facade another 300 maybe and then your cables and maybe a not a gig bar but maybe like a wash fx2 you, know, you got a solid little setup for under two grand but like i'd start it it depends because yeah pssl is a good place um i don't think that their deals are as good as as sweetwater for sure uh i think sweetwater you have a lot more leeway when you talk to your rep there and they can guide you in the right direction pssl is more more commercial grade stuff more professional production stuff rather than commercial or uh, consumer grade so um yeah you can also just do the amazon thing but you can build a solid little setup for two grand. I know DJ Bar did a couple of videos on like DJ setups for under two grand. Um, but the biggest thing for me is, I think I mentioned this on another show, you can't just like say you want to be a DJ and just go right into it. You need the music. 
So if all you've been doing your whole past 10 years is streaming stuff on Spotify and making playlists, that's great, but you don't own that music. What, how are you going to get it all? I mean, are you going to spend months and months downloading it or signing up with a record pool? And I mean, all, all of us have just built a music collection over the years, and that's not just something you could just, you know, get like that. Um, so I think, yeah, you kind of have to, I, I don't know. That's the hardest part is is the music. Yeah, music is is a very crucial part of having that and getting that together. And it, it's it's difficult to build a, a DJ set. But again, if you're we're looking past that part, and again, it's a crucial part because without music, you don't have anything to play, <laughs> and you're not you can't you can't mix, you can't do anything, can't blend, can't even you know. And there's DJs who do Spotify. There are Spotify DJs out there. Um, yeah. So you know. That that's that's up uh, that's that's how they do it. But I would say having s at least some music, something on your hard drive, more than just twenty songs, probably you know you at least want at least a gig. I would say start off with a gigabyte MP3s of clean, high quality music. And you know going through some of the professional DJ pools, I really feel it's very important. And even if Someone who doesn't subscribe to promo only. I, I I can't tell you how good promo only is. As a, I'm, I'm a user of them. I pay monthly for promo only. I get all their music. I get all their music videos. But even though if you don't subscribe to them, even you go to them and they run sales all the time, you sign up for information from them. You can get the DVDs or actually they're not actual physical DVDs, but they're music video sets. And you can pick like best of the 80s or best of hair bands or best of party favorites. And they're edited, no foul language. They're edited uh, sometimes with nice intros and outros to help you out, get you in and out those nice slopes. And then also help, it has a lot of very high quality audio. And the video is very high quality and they're licensed music. So that's one of the ways if you don't want to spend a few dollars on some of those sets for promo only. That would be one of the ways. The other things is sign for professional pools. Promo only is a professional pool uh, that you can get licensed music from promo only. But even if you sign for some of the other pools, again, you want to watch it and see what's going on. You definitely want to have um, music before you start. Uh, DJ Brightly, if you if I had two thousand dollars and I was starting out to be a DJ. And I can't do say, hey, dude, I need your help. Where would you go for equipment and what kind of equipment would you look at? Would you, what, what do you think would be some of the stuff you'd look at? If there's a particular model I mean, you want or anything? The first question I would ask is, are you looking to do weddings? Are you looking to do bars and karaoke kind of stuff? Because two grand for a wedding budget, that's, that's a tough call. For something credible, that's not going to have you charging six seven hundred dollars a wedding and being in that realm unless that's where that person would want to be but at 2k if you're just building a basic setup i mean because of how a lot of the used companies are like reverb online guitar center is pretty good with their used gear as well granted you might be buying someone's headaches but if you buy you know and i've bought some things from guitar center used and i've had to send a couple things back whatever it wasn't important but you could come up with, like, speakers, subs, a decent light bar, stands and cables for right or maybe $1,500. And I'd hate, you know, I'm not a big fan of the DDJ 400 or those decks, but being a record box DJ, and I'll throw this part of it next, but if you get a 400 and you're using record box, they've got Tidal, they've got Beatport or Beat Source that you can stream from. At that point, you may not need to have all of your music right out the gate, but you can curate crates up to X number of songs on each one of those that you can use as you're getting started while you go through the process of actually downloading music. And like you said, promo only is a great source. I'm not a super big fan of their stuff because they don't have enough uh, remixes, um, their EDM, their dance collections aren't that deep, so to speak. 
and with that, like I find myself downloading from about 10 different pools. And what I do is once a, like I was doing it earlier, once every couple of days, I will get caught up and hit every one of those, go through the last three or four days in each one. And rather than just listen to the stuff, I will download anything that even looks like it might be applicable. And, or for example, you see like the new NLE Chapa song. Yeah, I may not be a big fan, but Slut Me Out is the biggest song in college clubs right now. So maybe one of his new songs might hit. I will download them and maybe I'll screen them and I'll screen them and maybe I'll keep them. But I've got it in an external hard drive that I put off to the side. So if I ever need it, I can pull it back out. But by doing and going through every pool, it gives me a very big, diverse sound of music where I can find, like, you know, some of my favorite pl- uh, people out of Club Killers, DeVille, um, even Steve. Uh, Crooklyn Clan's got their own. So if you can f- go through every one of these pools, it's time consuming and a little expensive. I'm not going to lie. My subscriptions are running me about $200 a month now. But you, it does, one, keep you from sounding like everyone else that you can start putting in different songs. And then another great in, with, thing with that, it gives you a bigger library. So if I'm at a wedding, they're like, do what you do at that nightclub, but not that nightclub. Now I know what you mean. I can go in that direction and have everything I need for it. But another great source that someone's got the money or the time and you can download, download them online. And this is one thing I did when I left the nightclub I was at and had to literally build, kind of build my own DJ setup. I had a deck, I had speakers, and for two years I was using a really big bass rig, uh, a 115 and a 410 bass setup for my subs. And those things kind of hit a lot better than most of the subwoofers I've dealt with. I love my Mac ESR-18s. I love my partner's EVs, and for the RCFs I've heard, have been phenomenal. But this bass amp, it it, it was wild how well it, it worked as a subwoofer. But with that, like when I was building it all, uh, one of the things I did for music was I got all the um, uh, so you uh, the big music collection. Uh, now that's you know the '80s. Now that's this, uh, and did that with downloading all the billboard year-to-year charts so between those which was a real cheap solution because you could get those albums for like a dollar online each and with those whole collections now you've got every single chart you can think of from billboard going you can get them back all the way to the 20s and 30s i think or 30s and 40s if you want but they're not as in depth and as you get year by year forward you have all the hits you could possibly need so if you can, you know, or pick the best of each decade from one of those companies and put those all together, you've got a good base to start music with. Then you can kind of weed out what you don't need and then start adding to it as you're making money. The the, the thing is that with, again, $2,000 for equipment for gear, you know, music, I would probably say you need at least $500 yeah. minimum just to start building your music repertoire um to represent different things because you may have a, cu- a couple if you're doing weddings that wants country you may want a couple that wants edm you may have a couple that wants 80s or 90s so having a little bit of everything is not a bad thing and if you gotta go out and go out to legitimate sources and get those songs and pull them and make sure you have them when people request certain things that's the important part but if you go to the equipment again two thousand dollars for equipment for a dj setup if you're doing weddings, do you go with all white or do you go with black or do you do a little bit of both? And I know you have some white stuff. I know Matt went to an all white setup. Braylon has got a white setup. I have a white setup. I also have a black setup. He has a black setup. Of course, Matt has a black setup and you have a black setup. If you're doing it, again, you're starting out. This is your, you're starting out. And again, music is a separate amount budgeted, $2,000 <laughs> just for gear. You know, you're looking at a controller. Yep, your cables, a microphone, a handheld microphone, a wireless microphone, at least two speakers, speaker stands, and again, some kind of lighting, something to illuminate the dance floor. And I feel that a couple pars that you can either use as uplights behind you, 
to wash the light over to the dance floor, depending on the ceiling, the white ceiling, nice tall ceiling. You can have that wash effect out of people. You don't need a bunch. You know, I would say probably, you know, you can go to uh, different ma different manufacturers to have battery operated ones. If you want to go to like Rockville or some of the Chinese knockoffs, you can get those inexpensive ones. They work pretty well. You know, Rockville's, I, I have Rockville's, they work really well. Uh, but if you wanted the better quality ones, again, it's going to cost more money. But we're, we're trying to stay within a budget of $2,000. So also it's knowing places where to buy stuff. You know, if you're going to Sweetwater, if you're going to uh, an FLX Pro, places like that who have DJs working there, people who know DJ gear, they could talk to you. And again, looking through everything, you, you, you there's a bunch of different places. Uh, uh um there's uh oh god pro audio star out east um dj123 here in chicago you know down down in the city down by uh um down by uh uh white Sox. uh you got god there's so many companies you can go to some will give you deals you need to talk to them and find out i feel that you know having a beginning pair of speakers I would probably go with either a 10 or 12 to start off with. And the reason why I go to a smaller speaker is because you want to be able to cover, but a lot of times <clears> the cheap 15s, the lesser price 15s, are not really that great. They use the same tweeter as a 10 and 12. They just put a bigger woofer in the bottom. Yet 20 seconds of Cermak. You know what I'm talking about here, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian, he's, he's answering in there. Um, and, uh, it, it's it's one of the, it's one of the things talking to them and talking to, and say hey you know this I'm, this is my budget and I want to get everything I need to get and and Matt made some good things saying you know hey what about a table what about you know at least a tablecloth you know and you know like I have bunting around the table if you don't want to get a facade you know I'm not a facade fan I feel a lot of times people wait on them and I, I, we've seen some video on 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 the tubes of people crashing into them. Um, I'm not, it's not a fan for facades. Now having a booth, again, that's ad additional cost, additional money. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're here tonight. Thank you so much. I saw you come in and pop in and pop back out. The the, the goal here tonight is, I, I sent you a uh, message before, was if we had to build from the beginning part, and again, we, we, we established that, you know, music's an important thing. You need to have music, you, you know, getting music from legitimate sources. You need to have, you can't just have, you know, in magical Never Never Land, you know, on 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 a, a cloud somewhere, you need to have physical music in your hard drive and have stuff. We already had that, that already done. I'm saying for gear wise, if you have two thousand dollars, what are some of the things that you'd look at to try have with that two thousand dollars? What's some of the gear you'd look at? What is some of the stuff you look at? Like one of the things and. I know Matt has a Hercules controller. This is a controller I do I use here for Twitch. I use this for cocktail hour. Um at you know, it's a nice $99 little basic controller from Hercules. It's, you know, 100 bucks. It it has a it basically has a headphone jack for audio for headphone and your audio out is a headphone jack. So it's a you know, 3.5 or 1/8 uh jack on both ends it's a usb micro uh plug so it's not usb c unfortunately but it's a basic very basic and again i use this for twitch but i also use this at cocktails at some of the cocktail hours because it's compact i plug my computer into this and then i go from this right here the, the headphone jack out into a xlr so you know uh you know 3.5 or 1 8 xlr and plug into a Maui 5 Go, or I've done it plugged into some J8s and then daisy chain the day two J8s or two Maui 5s. I just didn't use that a couple weeks ago at a wedding. This little controller for $99. So this is why I'm saying that for $99, starting out, or or like myself, a seasoned DJ has been around for 19 years. This is a nice little controller here that you can get, you can pick up for a hundred bucks. This is something that you know, as a beginning DJ. You can cut your teeth on this and then go into and spend money into, if you want to, go into better controllers. Go into, you know, again, we're 
that that's one of the things when you're starting out with two thousand dollars, a basic controller, you know, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. That's what you're looking at. Speakers again, you want to spend a little more money on that because you want a little better quality. And, but you have brands like you know American DJ, Harbinger, uh, Behringer, stuff like that, who are more basic. But what are some of the things you would say that you would brands you look at or price you look at? Yeah. Um... So to answer the question, I do think I definitely think it's doable. I mean, with two thousand dollars, I think it's definitely doable to get it together. Um, now I'll I'll come at it from two different views. If you're gonna get gear completely freshly new, like paying full price for things for two thousand dollars, might be a little difficult. Uh, you're gonna get it, but it's just might be a little difficult. Um, the other side I would come from it at like at it from is. I mean, utilize resale kind of things, utilize um, like Facebook Marketplace was my huge thing that helped me out so much as a beginner DJ. Um, it really was. Um, I knew what to look for and what not to look for, though. So I didn't just take any, oh, $100 for a pair of EV whatever speakers. Like, no, that's probably not a good deal. Um, but so the things that I would look for, though, would be for sure, like a set of speakers. So for me, I was an EV guy. So I did the, the well, actually, no, I upgraded to those. So my first set were like these Alto uh, speakers. They're actually decent Altos. Um, they were they were good. They were decent. Um, didn't have any problems with them at all. Um, but, but I ended up selling Alto, those. Alto is one of those brands that it's, it's right. It's it's a price point. Exactly. It's not it's not QSC. It's not JBL. It's not RCF. Exactly. It's not one of the premium brands. It's one of the brands basically for, again, a starter set or for a price point. And I know right. that, you know, again, if you go to the more expensive stuff, it is better sound quality. There's no doubt about it. But again, if you're starting out, you have a budget, $2,000, you're that tight budget. You can't get, you know, a pair of JH. You can't go get, you know, like Matt has dual 21 subs. You can't go get what Brentley has with nice EVs that you can put white sleeves on and make everything look um, like a million dollars. Again, we're starting out here at, you know, we're, 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 right. we're crawling versus all of us here are running. Uh, one of the things that Adrian E said, if you want to do some uh, work for music, make your way to a local library and check out the CDs and start ripping them. Hopefully you have a CD you drive uh, and it's free music. So that's something that Adrian E, that's one of the th things he said, that, you know, if you want to get some music, you know, go to your local library. They have music CDs. That's an option. Yeah. You know, it's like anything else uh, that you have there. But what, yeah. what do you feel is some of the stuff that you you think you don't want to look at for uh, for stuff, Raylan? So I would look at uh, speakers for sure. So definitely get like maybe some entry level, like your Altos, your Harbingers, um, Behringers, anything like that. Um Whatever you get your hands on, you know, maybe around four or five hundred bucks for a pair. That could probably be like a decent cost for it. Um, next thing I would look at, uh, I don't know if they still make it anymore, but the Pioneer, um, the SB3, uh, that controller, it's kind of similar. I think uh, I forget the, the one that I'm thinking of, but uh, that's when I really started on. The SB3 is a great entry level controller because it's a step down from like the pioneer, like the SR2 and all that, the SR series. So it's like SB, SR2, and then it kind of goes up to like your DDJ 1000, SRT, things like that. So it was an easy transition for me to go from the SB3 to the 1000 SRT. Um, so I would definitely look at that for sure. When it comes to lighting, like you said, buddy, you can get by with some pars, get like a light tree, like a light stand for like 60 bucks, 50 bucks get some par lights if you need to um if you can find it on facebook marketplace someone's selling like a light bar of sorts um you can do that see those light I, bars you can get on amazon for anywhere from 100 to 200 dollars right and they're and new they, they, they get it done they get the job done yeah well but, instead, of using yeah. Like a, instead of using a gig bar here's a, something that you could do that i've seen some djs uh, especially some DJs out in California, DJ I know, uh, he has a lot, of, like Matt, does a lot of outdoor weddings, and there's no walls, no ceiling to bounce light off. So you got to have a bunch of pars behind you. You have 30 pars behind you lighting up the air. <laughs> it's not going to do anything, you know. Uh -huh. So you got to think about putting light in front of you. And Matt has a great, you know, like if you see the picture behind him, laser show, light show. But if you didn't have Matt's equipment, Matt's DMX, Matt's know-how, and then have Matt's, you know, 
years and years of experience or any of our experience, one of the things you could do, and I've seen, again, some pro DJs do this out in California, you take a couple pars and you X them, you, you run four pars, two on one side, two on the other side, you X them across on the, underneath the underneath the tablecloth or right in front of the tablecloth, you pull them back a little bit and cover them with the tablecloth, and you're basically shining onto the people at the feet, and they're, they're lighting up almost from the bottom. That way, not hitting in the eyes too much, but you're still lighting them up. Because a lot of times, some of those, like, the lights above shine down and hit people right in the face, and they're like, oh, great, now I'm blind. You can't see when I'm dancing now. So they hit someone by accident, or they bump someone, or they, they trip and fall. You don't want to do that. But that's something you could do to make it different. And you could find a tree. You could find something near you. Or if you're inside, again, like for a wall to wash the lights and have that effect, I feel that is a very strong thing. Uh, gig bars, again, I have a gig bar. I have a gig bar move. And I have it for one venue because that's what I'm kind of forced to use there because I don't have enough room to put up, you know, all this uh, setup. And it's kind of like, you know, set and forget it. It's very, it's very easy, very basic. It fits a dance floor. It works fine for that situation. Again, I, I, I like, again, like you guys, I have multiple tools in the toolbox. But if you're starting out, do you want to just go to a gig bar or do you get a couple of pars and put it on the floor and do an X pattern? Do you, you know, it, it, those are some of the things that, you know, you, you have to work out. And those are some of the things I would say you have options for. And having some lighting, I feel that's an important thing. You're having good speakers. You know, again, basic, decent speakers, a basic, decent controller, some basic, decent lighting. And again, stands. Yeah, you can go to Amazon. Amazon has stands. I know Matt has talked about the cables. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, I'll hop back on in a minute. I, I got to go to my storage unit, meet somebody. Oh, so it'll be no on problem. Mobile. Uh, no problem. He's got to do, he's got to do business. <laughs> Matt has talked about the uh, cables from Amazon that he's used, the speaker cables, the XLR cables. And he said they work really well. Um, so again, if you're budget that. conscious. I'm sorry, what? I'll agree with that because I, when I was looking for white cabling, XLRs, XLR to quarter inch, IEC power, no one had them. I mean, I was going to NFLX, they were out. Went on Amazon, and I had everything within like three days. All the white cabling I'm using now. And I haven't had any quality breakdowns, any like, you know, like how on some XLRs, the female end will start clamping it, like the connections will go. I've been using the same white set for now a year and a half. Not one issue. I mean, I don't baby my stuff, but I'm not, you know, yanking and doing all that with it. And it hasn't really given me any issues. So I, Amazon for cables, the pricing is definitely right. You can get, you know, longer. And with that, you'll also need like power strip, cable ties. Cable ties are like, I think five dollars for a hundred pack on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> but yeah, when you say that, and you said like the black or white, white is going to be harder to keep clean. And if you're just starting out, do you want to start throwing money into paint, cleaning scrims, and all that? I would go all black and then work up to a better white setup over time. Like I'm still waiting for my Icoa LTs in white. They're on back order. It's been a month and a half. So. I finally decided to get some. And when I do, you know, I was doing the retail therapy spending like two months ago and got the Flex 10, but couldn't get the speakers. And at this point, I'm like, well, the only benefit of the Flex 10 is that DMX plug-in. And aside from that, it's kind of nice having the uh, stems buttons, but almost two months in, I barely touched them. You, it's one of those things you have to really think about. But you can probably do a decent setup for 2Gs. I your think, speakers would be a big part of it. I think stems, and again, I've had stems longer because virtual DJs had stem longer than record box has. And, you know, for me, primer, 99%, 99.9% of my business is wedding. Uh, I've used stems a couple few times. And it's basically, basically mostly because people want to have a song. They want instrumental. Uh, they like the song. And they want instrumental version of it. And stems, you could take out the vocals yep. and make it instrumental, and they can have their song and do it. And I've done that for a few people. You know, uh, I've recorded a couple times. I've also done it live, and you know, break stuff down. So it, it's it's one of those great things that you know, stems is a good tool to have. I think maybe 
again, Brentley, because you do more clubs, you may run the stems a bit more. So to me, for a controller with stems buttons, again, for $2,000, your 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 Flex 10 costs you how much? $1,400, $1,600? $1,600 plus the hard shell, so two Gs. Brentley, yeah. yeah, you get your whole budget in one piece. You're, you're, yeah. you know, again, if we're trying to build a whole system. <laughs> no, if brands, I would so. say, being the record box DJ, I would go with the DDJ 400. You can find them for under five hundred dollars. Granted, they are RCA out, whatever. But and like I was saying, with a four hundred, if you use Record Box, I don't know what Serato has. I know Virtual DJ. You have some streaming services available. I don't. But that's another option if you get one of the apps that like that. You may not have to have the entire library out the gate. You can piece it together. But you still you, you, you still want a basic. You still want a basic. You want still a yeah. basic library. So my Matt, controller goes RCA. My yeah, my controller goes RCA out, and you see me rocking the biggest systems possible, and it sounds amazing. It's well, about the sound card. RCA out to a second mixer. Yeah, so that, that's one. Of, that's one of the things. Speaker. With two thousand dollars, you mean I had the budget to put a secondary mixer in there? Like some people, yeah, right. I don't. I know some of you guys do put a second mixer in there, run your controller into that second mixer, and the second mixer out for your is your main and control your vines, you know, you know micro connections and so forth. You know, the one one of the things I like is my I'm an XZ because I have microphone section. I could I could turn each microphone off or on separately. I have EQ for each microphone. I technically could have four microphones because I have a four channel mixer in the center. Two is dedicated for audio because I'm running two cha- I'm only running two decks and I'm running four or eight. But even running four decks, I, you're just switching between decks. It's only only using two. Uh, volume your crossfader is just for those two channels the outside you put it on through you can have two more microphones hooked up vrca you know xlr to rca i have that i have those connections because the fact that i've run three microphones on my xz you know two lapel microphones and handle microphone i've done that i've done that a couple times now no big deal so my channel one become or actually my channel three becomes a mic Versus it's for audio, but it's any audio source you want to feed into it. So it, it's one of the things that have an RCA out. You go RCA to either quarter inch RCA to XLR cables. And uh, we we're talking a little before you left, uh, Matt. Uh, the cables from um, Amazon. You said you like the cables. You like the, the cable quality, correct? Yeah, I, I think like I mean I use Amazon Basics uh, cables. Um, they sound just as good as any regular cable i've never had them fail um like whoever they're contracting it through like even I, i've done side to side side by side tests with like a hose ring cable and uh, a regular amazon quarter inch to xlr and i can't tell maybe it's the most minute difference but like in terms of build quality yeah i mean the amazon ones they're fine they're not you know they're not thin they're not super thick or but they're 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 cables and they work and I don't know. What I really like, though, is the best speaker stands I've ever used are the Amazon Basic speaker stands. They are phenomenal. And uh, a lot of people sleep on those, but those are the best speaker stands I think I've ever used. And they're when I got them, they were 19 bucks. I don't know how much they are now, but they're all they're an all steel construction. Um, and the knobs are like the they're straight instead of those stupid little twisty ones. Oh, um, yeah. So like you can actually get you can get a lot of leverage on them. They're durable. You could throw them around. They they go pretty high. They're, yeah, they're really nice stands. So whatever Amazon's Basics is doing, I mean, don't get their gaff tape, but their their XLR cables are perfectly fine, and they're they're not you know, they're inexpensive. So if I need, I've got a couple like hundred foot XLRs that I bring if I'm going a really really far run, and I keep those in my separate. Like I have one cable case that has everything I need for ninety percent of my gigs, and then I have a second one that I bring for. The other ten percent, which has stuff for more heavy duty applications and, and quad boxes and things like that, for when I'm running the dual subs and the towers and need power to go farther and all that stuff. And Braylon, what about you? Is there have you tried the Amazon cables? Have you is there a cable, a budget cable you worked with, or 
Uh, not necessarily. So, I mean, I I have a guitar center really literally right down the road from me. So, um, boo, boo. I'll get Overpay- over it. Over overpaying for cables. Boo. Here's the deal. So, Livewire. So, Livewire. I have like Livewire is their brand, right? So, I I use the Livewire stuff. Um, it is nice that they do have like a lifetime warranty. Your cables crap out at all. You literally just bring the cable back to them. They just look and make sure that it's a Livewire cable, and they just replace it right on the spot. So, I do like that. Um, so that's pretty good. But I also do like the Hosa cables. I have a good amount of hoses as well for certain applications. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I don't I haven't really, I haven't really used the Amazon um cables necessarily yet. So uh yeah, I haven't I just don't like I just don't like the guitar center. Like they know you're in a pinch and they know you that you're coming there like Saturday at two PM because you forgot a cable or your cable went bad or whatever, and then they just want to charge you, you know. $26 for cable it's like six bucks on Amazon and you're just like well I guess I got no other option so I just I just I, the seediness of Guitar Center they've gotten a lot better but I like, get if it. you call them if you call them they'll do some pretty good pricing now um, which is how like I used to do baseball stuff and it's nice if you don't like a speaker you could just drop it off oh, at any Guitar rough. Center so it gets rid of the you know the shipping part but right now that you can like sweetwater will pay for return shipping on nearly everything so like those yamahas i had i just i needed them for a pinch and they were more of a rental and you know i didn't the reason they asked why am i returning them because the grill is too see-through i mean and they're like okay they <laughs> so and, and sweetwater I, just built a brand new uh uh facility for uh get, get uh, a yeah, warehouse just, and for shipping it's, it's amazing facility uh i haven't been over there personally but I kind of wanted to go to GearFest, but GearFest is GearFest is coming up, and that's that's crazy. Kurt, my brother from Am Australia. I, how, how are you guys? How are you going? How are you, how doing, are you? How's it going? from Australia. Good, thanks. <laughs> uh, Kurt, I, if you guys saw his uh, video, uh, he put a new video up. He had to put a video up for a bit. And uh, welcome back to the world of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's been eight months. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 booth, that booth is nice. That booth that you built is nice. Oh, yes. Thanks, mate. How, Thanks a lot. So I got a question for you on your booth. How mm. can I get one? <laughs> <laughs> is it, yeah, it is a bit heavy. It's quite heavy. Um, I kind of regret putting the little small wheels on it. I should have went big rubber pneumatic wheels. Um, but apart from that, it's, you know, it's not too bad pushing around venues and stuff like that. So, yeah. You're going to put a TV in the front of it? Uh, like the, uh, I don't know if you've seen um, the Toad uh, Boots, like uh, yeah. he has one. I did want a TV and then I got pretty lazy. So, but then if I do put a TV on, I want something really light and really thin just so it doesn't, you know, the profile looks all right. And um, yeah, see how, see how it goes. A TV re- would have been really sweet. It looks um, really, as I really said, nice. I got lazy. It looks really, really Thanks, nice. Thanks, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I just working. couldn't deal with setting everything up manually all the time. It was taking me, you know, up to two, two and a half hours to set up all my gear. I said, if I don't do something about this, I'm going to quit, <laughs> quit DJing. So I built the booth and, yeah. And you, you, have, a, you, have, a, you have a truck, you have a van for your DJ business, I've, right? I've got a trailer. You got a trailer. A trailer okay. yeah. You you because you yeah. have a pickup truck, or as you guys call me, you. Yeah, yeah. I've got a. Huge, you have a pickup yeah. truck. Okay. Yeah. So you you told you told a trailer you have it on a trailer. So and again, that's that's one of the things having an advantage of having a trailer uh, is that you hit those mm. booths, you go in and out. Yeah. Uh, you know, like myself and, Bre- and Brantley, we have a van. Um, Braylon, you got you have your SUV, and you do you have a trailer or? Nope, not yet. Um, not yet. Okay. I know yeah, Matt I has his uh, yeah. Tahoe. And then he has a trailer as well. For I give, stuff, I just so. give, I just give U-Haul all my money every weekend, pretty much. <laughs> it's still yeah, never going to be, it's never going to be uh, to the point to where it would make more sense to get a trailer because mm-hmm. like I need a different size each time. I don't always need the giant six by 12, but if I was to get a six by 12 trailer, it's 30 bucks a day for a rental. So 60 it's bucks cheap. per weekend, it would take like a hundred rentals to get to like six grand for like a new trailer. And those mm. are usually closer to like eight or nine. So, and I don't have anywhere to store it. I also don't want a trailer. I don't like having to use a trailer. Um, I hate having to tie stuff down. Like it's just, 
I, I enjoy putting stuff in the seats because it's a lot more secure and safe. So, like, all my speakers, I never put those in the trailer. Here's, here's the flight case. You do, Matt. You get a trailer. You put it inside. You put a window in the side. It slides back and forth. That way you get to the gig. You set up a grill in there. You pop the little uh, pop the little top. You start <laughs> burgers and hot dogs. <laughs> you're selling burgers and hot dogs out of the trailer and DJ. You're DJ Burger Time. There you go. New DJ, new business. Guys, the limit, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's mystery burgers. <laughs> yeah. Mystery. You don't do want to know want, the mystery. Um, do you want dual twenty one subs or dual dual patties on your burger? What would you like? <laughs> there you go. You know, the dual twenty one, dual twenty one burger. That's what you have. The dual twenty one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get the dual eighteen, the dual twenty one. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> I just, I just need, I need a lot of base. Like, I, I, when I, I talked to my friend about it this weekend, and he's like, "Do you really need that?" And and so and so, and I'm just like, music needs to sound balanced and good. So if mm. you have a lot of noise screaming out of a top, and you don't have the bass to match it, like. Mm. That, that's the thing when i dj at this one venue they don't technically allow subwoofers but nobody said anything about it and i'm pretty close with them so they're they just kind of look the other way and at the end of the night the staff the bartenders are like it was loud but it sounded good like it sounded balanced when the other djs are here it just my ears hurt because it's just screaming and there's not mm. like a balanced sound and it's like and that's an important yeah. thing balancing that sound yeah. so so kurt we were talking earlier um and i know australia is different from us here in the states for price wise and we were trying to think about someone who's starting out as a dj and mm. they had two thousand dollars so mm. we'll say I, I know the dollar between the us dollar and the australian dollar is different so i'd probably say me mm. twenty five hundred dollars australian uh, more like probably more like three stuff? yeah nearly three thousand here so okay we'll say three thousand dollars australian if i had three thousand dollars australian and I want to build a basic system. Again, not, not a computer, no computer in that price. I already have a laptop I'm going to use, whatever laptop. So I can use whatever software. Gonna, we talked a little bit so about So you're not going to include the laptop. You want standalone. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, no, no laptop and that price? I know. I, I have a laptop already. I'm, I'm just starting out as a DJ. I have my own laptop. It's 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 a, it's an, it's a laptop. Your Apple, Windows, whatever it is, I have a laptop. Um, we we're talking a little bit about music too, but if I have music, I'm going to do that as a separate amount. I'm going to say, you know, here five hundred dollars. I'd probably say probably by you seven or eight hundred dollars to get music, yep. just ba just basic music to have mm -hmm. for your library, um, so you're not streaming all the time. Um, if you if you had to do stuff, what would be some of the things some of the things you'd look at? You know, again, speakers, controller stands cables microphones i didn't get into wireless microphone either because mm. you know, wireless microphone know. What brand you go with uh, you know there's a wireless microphone within that price range i mean you want to you want a decent set of microphones or at least a single unit so a decent half decent microphone here is around six hundred dollars um is is it is a wireless microphone within that budget I think if you're just starting off, maybe a decent corded microphone. Um, well, yeah, that, that's one of the things you need, at least a corded microphone. Yeah. So, like, here... I mean, yeah, there are those cheaper microphones, isn't there? There's, like, what's some of the brands? The Infinities and the... I know Phoenix. Phoenix is one. Phoenix, that I've Phoenix seen a lot of yeah, I will I say, I'm those. pretty impressed with my Phoenix gear. I yep. I will say the PT fifty uh, PTU fifty two are rock solid. They're four thousand to five thousand because they have like two or four on each kit. They're okay. I haven't had any issues with them, but their PTU fifty two series is phenomenal. Phenomenal for what I think. I mean, okay, I should. They do give me my mics for free, so I'm. <laughs> but I won't lie that I, I've been rather impressed with fifty two. All right, so say you, you had one of those microphone sets and then you're going to need a half-decent controller, so maybe a DDJ-400, um, which is what, $400? Three, dollars yeah. yeah. Um, speakers, I'd be going 15-inch over the 12s um, because you're not going to be running 
a subwoofer, obviously. Actually, if you're no, basic. I, was, I was saying before, mm. I don't know, again, in Australia, you guys have some different brands we have up here, but a lot of the budget price, beginning price, or entry price speakers, the tweeter is the same size as a 10 or 12. Mm. And here's something that I've been told um, by other DJs who actually talk to sound engineers who make speakers. One of them was in Italy talking to RCF a few years ago. And he told me that the engineers there feel the best speaker, you're going to do a two-way cabinet and a bottom, is either a 10 or 12-inch top with a, a 15 or 18-inch sub on the bottom. And that gives mm. the most mid-bass with a most sub. balance. And it gives you, yeah, it gives most balance. It's not ear-piercing. It's not mm. it drive you crazy. Mm. So... Even if you look at two, let's say two 10 inch speakers or two 12 inch speakers, and then mm. down the road, you get enough gigs together, you get a single 15 inch woofer. So it takes that base away from those speakers. You kind of have a little bit more balanced system and you actually improve your system and have that nice sound. But again, that for you, $3,000 for here for the estates, $2,000 is a, a price point that you know you don't want to, you're not gonna have to be able to have you probably not gonna have enough money for a subwoofer for that price point unless you mm. uh, add another thousand dollars on top of that and get a okay decent subwoofer. But again, if you look to plan ahead a little bit, that's one of the things. And I'm getting some information here. Uh, we got an agreement with Matt that the Amazon cables, Amazon branded cables, are pretty good and they enjoy them. Uh, some of this shout out to you, DJ Adrian E. He's shouting out to you, uh, Dinah Blend. So you're saying hi to you, Kurt. And then, oh, uh, yep. hey, mate, how are you? Also, also, the Phoenix is amazing, and they love their mics. Good, good, good. And that's the important stuff is, uh, you know, I know a few DJs, and again, I, not just here on YouTube, but also, you know, the idea with, too, you know, friends of mine, as well as you guys uh, here on the, in the, on the table, use Phoenix equipment and really enjoy it. And... Um, <laughs> It's great. I mean, I've been using my Phoenix, all my almost all my Phoenix gear except my inner monitors for three years now. My soundboards are near the mixing boards, soundboard, whatever you call, whatever you call them, and all my mic sits. And I, ha with the exception of one venue where we know where the dropout is caused by the building itself, I've never had an issue. And I've gone, gosh, I want to say at least. 500, 600 feet with the PTU-52 or my 4,000 and haven't had any issue. So, I mean, I I'm pretty impressed with their gear, to be perfectly honest. And in three, I mean, it's been, yeah, three years. And I, I'm with my toad, I'm looking at what mics to put in there now, and I'm probably just going to get their new digital setup. And it's got a dual mic set, and they're pretty nice, a little bit more than everything else they've got, but you can rack mount them which is a big thing. That's kind of why I got the toad, so I can rack mount things and roll it. But I just haven't figured out how to put it all together yet, which is going to be a pain. Like, what do I want in there? Where do I want to put it? I wish somebody actually made a legitimately decent rack mount, like, that takes up a two-space unit soundboard. I would definitely would say, if you haven't got a chance to watch DJ Dinable and Kurt's video on his, on his rack, on what he did. He has a beautiful uh, rack down below with a DBX uh, drive box and stuff like that and all this other stuff for processing and power protection all built into that. I would definitely say watch that and that way you get some ideas and not sound bad, steal some great ideas from a great DJ that you could build your, with your own rack. And this is something that I feel a lot of people should be looking at and going, how can I improve even a table? Even if I have a a six foot table I got from Amazon and I need to put some stuff on that table. What's some of the things I should have to improve either my sound, make things more organized, make things easier to get in and out. And some of the things he was doing, he was showing was just amazing. I did like also the led strip you have inside the table in ah, your that, side that you could change colors on it. <laughs> and that bloody little, um, they always come with that sticky back, Back in that you mm -hmm. peel off and you yep. put the lights wherever you want. That lasts about two weeks before they all start falling down. So I had to get the super glue and um, <laughs> make sure that 
it wasn't going to fall off again. One of the things I learned a long time ago <laughs> is that glue right there. Yeah, it's not. It, it's you got to look at the source of the product. A lot of the products are Chinese, and it may say like 3M on it or another brand of. It had 3M on it. It's really usually not. It's usually a knockoff or it's it's not high quality. It, it, you have to uh, look at look at replacing that. I. I I learned that a long time ago. If I if I use a strip of of that stuff, if I could pull the glue off and put my own glue on, I I'd much rather do that. But those LEDs, that LED strip was mm. something was that's really cool because 50 have bucks. that little bit of light there that you can mm. dim. You can turn red and turn dim. Have it low so you have just low lighting, and red light is what you want at mm. night. So that blind even turn a mm. white light and have it at like you can have it on a lower setting just to light up around there because you're always looking for stuff. I can't t tell you how many times, even on my DJ table, my DJ booth, I've like looked for stuff. I got turned a flashlight on my phone, grab my phone, turn a flashlight on, yeah. and look for. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Because you, everything we have is black. You know, <laughs> I'm wearing mm. black. The, the booth is black. <laughs> you know, you look around, everything's black, and it's like, oh wow, uh, yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> so having um, those lights there, I think is really cool, and I. I really like how you have the, the setup on it. And one of the things I know you said you want to put uh, basically a cover around the bottom uh, to hide the wheels. One of the companies here, when they do theirs, and I think it's um, Toad, they have magnets on like every oh, so right. often. Like on the sides, they have like four magnets across the front. They have like uh, four yep. magnets across the front, and they have the magnets mm. recess into basically uh, molding. You can go from a uh, you know, hardware store, get mo pre-done molding, prime it, oh, right. it uh, countersink the magnets on there, put the magnets in the front there, and that way they Good stick idea. on and they come off real quickly. And if you need to paint mm. them real quick, some nix it up, you know, it's it's some it's, it's something you go to like you know, again your home improvement store, and you get these you get the piece of wood. It's it's pretty easy again. And if if somehow or another that gets discontinued, look for another molding. And you just got to start back over very quickly. But it's something that. You can grab very easily, you know, you, you cut it right, and you put it in the corners, and boom, done and over with. Just got a minor box to get those corners right, so you have nice, so they line up nicely. <laughs> yeah, the corner, the corners are always tough on um, projects. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's why I'm not a carpenter, but I do know that. <laughs> I don't play one on TV either, folks. <laughs> but I'm still trying to figure out, Brylin. How to get my Wash FX twos off that stupid spinny mode they do? <laughs> I know what you're talking uh, about. Uh, I mean, if, you if I one of these days I'll figure it out, and yeah. Are you um not to go too deep into it? I mean, are you using like a like a lighting um like some kind of interface to control like a DMX interface at all? Yeah, sound switch and a little Akai MPD pad. Gotcha. I don't know too much about sound switch personally, but I do know no. a little bit about the settings, like on the actual back of the wash effects, what the settings should be on to actually have the DMX work and the channel work. There's a chance you might not have the right thing there. Um, I can try to help you if at some point, maybe. Oh, the, no, they're all working, they're all, you know, in sync, doing whatever I want. But the thing with these wash effects too, is they get stuck on that stupid, instead of just flashing red, green blue right. they they do this little spinny thing yep. where the lights go to, oh it's such yep. a I know, waste i know what you're talking about yeah Makes i program i program mine so that way they don't do that um but i have the adj uh, dmx bridge app that i use to set my scenes so but yeah sound switch i just don't know anything about it really i know a few djs that use sound switch and the guys who use sound switch they, they really like it it's oh yeah why is i AI. It's not true AI. I know there's a couple of companies working on AI for mm -hmm. lighting. Um, uh, there's a few people who have talked about it, and uh, I know a few of the shows, they were starting to show it uh, AI, basically AI D, uh, D, uh, DMX, that basically you tell it what you want the lights to do. You just tell it, here's the light. I want it to shine above people's uh, heads. The light is six feet off the ground or seven feet off the ground. Or in your case, nice. uh, a meter and a half off the ground for you guys down in Australia. <laughs> and I want it to shine above people's heads. You just tell the AI what you want it to do. You just, mm -hmm. hey, AI, I, I have, uh, you know, a Chave Wash FX or I have a, uh, no, not Wash FX. I have a Chave Moving Head 360, you know, a Timner 360. I want, I want it to go above people's heads. 
it's you know uh, six feet off the ground or seven feet off the ground, and I want to go to this color, this color, this color. And the AI says, okay, fine, great. It automatically knows, oh, okay, you're connected to this. Okay, it sees it, it talks to it, and does everything wow. you tell it to do. And you have to like, you know, do any kind of program other than put it into uh, DMX mode, the, the light. It automatically goes in and programs the channel. It says, okay, oh, you're on this channel. It sees what it is. It talks to it, sees how many channels it is. Ah, okay, fine, great. Figures out exactly what it is. Does everything by itself. So there's some cool stuff out there, cool technology that'll be coming for uh, for us DJs that yeah. uh, will make sound switch and some of the other software, except for Matt's software, because Matt is a ge mad it's, genius with his DMX uh, lighting. You know, it's his great. light shows are best on YouTube. I think they're awesome. Yeah, he puts a lot of work into them, and I mean, he he should be doing concerts with some of the lighting he does. It's like concert yeah. level lighting at a wedding. It is. It's very good. You know, I, 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 um, what do you, how sense. about you, uh, Brett? What do you use for your lighting? You got washers or? I, I've been using eight uh, Shoei Slim Part 56. And this year I've been using more of my Intimidator 150s again. Oh, and I'm finally going to put a couple, I'm finally going to turn a couple of my lights into strobes or put them back as strobes that have been sitting in my garage. Because a couple of my weddings have finally asked for more than the basic kind of lighting setup because they have people that are light sensitive. Which, for some reason in my market, you would think, with all the alcoholism and drug abuse, people wouldn't care about mm. lighting, but they actually kind of do. That's the one mm. thing that a lot of couples will be like, we don't want anything flashy, going crazy, or anything of that nature. I got rid mm. of all my derby lights, though, all the like, spiders, anything that leaves little dots. I just took, out of, took them all of my setup. And don't use, like, a gig bar anymore for weddings. Mm. When I'm at clubs, I've got a couple of party bars that are basic gig bars. But What's up, DJ Fire? That's about it. Sorry, I yeah, missed track powers. of time. It's been one of those days. Um, I, for some reason, I thought it was only like, like for some reason, I was thinking <laughs> the show was on at nine and not eight, and I don't know, it slipped my mind. And yeah, so I was like, oh, no, dude, you're you're that. working hard. I saw one of your videos today for uh, you're digging up. Uh, uh, you're cutting someone's lawn and then you're digging it up to row it to, to, to make it even and flat. You had the uh, uh, your tractor, Kubota out there and stuff. So. Uh, FS tractor was going out to put in hydrous in a field and he took the wrong road and got not stuck, but it was a track tractor, like an army tank, had them rubber tracks. Well, it destroyed and made bumps. I don't know if you've ever been down a road where a track tractors went down, but it's it's bumpy and she didn't like it. She's an elderly woman and she's like, I want to fix. So I went out and fixed it. Now, FS yeah. has hired me to, every time they have a problem, which they have apparently uh, problems with that all the time, they're going to call me to go fix their problems. So, Well, there you go. And you make, you're make you making money in business. You know, you yeah. got multiple uh, irons in the fire. Also saw your wedding you did for the firefighter. Good job on that, sir. Yeah, that was I, the last I like minute the, kind of uh, thing. Jessica came in to help do photography because their photographer showed up two and a half hours late, charged them $600, didn't do any, like, pre- pre-filming anything like any shooting of them getting ready so jessica did all that and kind of helped them out with that um i've got a wedding this weekend um it's gonna be different it's at a very very classy place so i'm setting up friday night wedding saturday probably have a gig log up early next week uh mike's coming to help me set up since he don't have anything going on this weekend and then i think i'm done for the rest of the month and I don't think I have anything yet in June. So, but yeah, I've been super busy with DJ and lawn care's picked up, mowing all day tomorrow, trying to get gig videos up. I'm behind. I've got more product reviews. Uh, I've got new studio lighting coming, actual like box lighting that's, you know, most studios use, portrait studios and stuff. Um, I've got uh, more stuff working on for the studio. Um, yeah, I'm just so busy with lawn care. I literally mow all day, come home, eat, and go to bed. So, but how's everybody doing? I ain't talked to y'all for a while. I can't complain. Good. Not yeah. at all. That's good. We're all uh, busy, man. We're just waiting for you to busy. come back here full time. And I know you got to, uh, a lot of stuff going on out there with the landscape business, and you have a lot of irons in the fire and stuff like that. So we need to... Hey, uh, 
one of my friends that, that helps me there that was in that last video, uh, Clint, well, he was in both of my last videos uh, on New Horizon. They, um, He's going to be starting his own YouTube channel up. So if you guys like to watch kind of a country boy, redneck, hick boy, do some fun stuff, you might want to go subscribe to him. I, I just actually was nice and bought him a computer. Uh, well, had someone build him a computer so that he could do editing and stuff. I've got to go pick it up tomorrow. Oh, good. Um, so he's going to be starting a YouTube channel. So I'll probably make a video about that on one of my channels to kind of support him. And you guys can go check him out and show him some love. Hit the subscribe well, button. Of course. For and of course. Did you tell him how tough it's going to be? I'm sorry. Do did you what? tell him how tough? <laughs> did you tell him how tough and disappointing it's going to be for him? Um. Yeah, I told him. I said, though, there's some channels <laughs> that can hit a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours in a matter of weeks. There's other channels that it takes years. I started my YouTube channel over ten years ago, but I actually started pushing hard and trying to do product reviews and stuff and get monetized. Probably about four years ago. So it probably took me four years ago. Mike Coleman's up to 610 subscribers. He's growing pretty quick. He's already got his 4,000 watched hours. So he'll be, as soon as he gets 1,000, he'll be he'll be good to go. But once you hit that 1,000 subscriber mark, so I get probably six, seven, eight, nine subscribers a day on my Nathan 343 channel. There you go. And then, you know, again, make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to everyone's channels here. Everyone has channels on YouTube. And I want to make sure I want to thank everyone for coming in tonight. DJ Fire, Nathan, again, great to see you. Great to hear. Kurt, thanks for right. stopping by here. All of you from Australia. See, we're international nice. here. <laughs> Braylon, thank you. Matt, I don't know if you can hear me. Thank you. And DJ Bradley, thank you so much for being here tonight. And his assistant. Can't forget her. <laughs> thank you also for being here. And thank you all for tuning in tonight. We'll see you again next week here on the DJ Roundtable, where we'll discuss things. And again, if you got a question, comment, critique, criticism, ask down below. Thank you.